Hello, this is Null Inquisitor, and today I'm going to review GURPS Magic. It was uh, a request, um, so here it is. Um, so the first things you have to know about GURPS Magic is detailed in its first chapter, Principles of Magic. So they say they open the chapter saying that magic is a powerful force that can be manipulated with skills that are called spells. And this is the most important thing about uh, the magic system, the vanilla magic system in GURPS, which is a skill base, basically. Uh, another thing you have to know about the magic system is that it's, it is logically based, so you're not um, you're not browsing in a, a catalog of powers um, and, and and choosing the spells you want to have and add it in your spell book. No, you uh, will choose a different. Um, school of magic or uh, thematically linked spells and you will have to buy many skills in the, the spells you you want to have based on the principle of um, you start from basic stuff and you advance uh, towards uh, more advanced spells what I mean by that is um, for example, the uh, ever popular uh, fire college uh, or school or whatever <clears throat> fire spell. Uh, before casting a fireball, here's the skill you need to learn. You need to uh, create a spark. You need to be able to, to create a spark. That spell is called Ignite Fire. Then you proceed to learn uh, another skill or spell called create fire to create a more sustainable fire just a flame um, not necessarily in your hand but in front of you then you go on to shape fire you learn to shape the fire for example in the shape of a ball so you need to the, the spell to create um, a shape to, to, to control the shape of, a, of the fire then you can buy uh, a spell called Fireball. So this is the, the, the typical uh, process of uh, uh, creating a wizard in, in, in GURPS. You buy an advantage called Magical Aptitude or uh, Majory. Um, and uh, just having this advantage can allow you in certain campaigns to cast spells. So it, it's just as easy as that. So right from the bat, you can have your barbarian warrior who can cast fire spell or plant spell or animal spell uh, if, you, if you like. Uh, you just have to allocate some points to it and there you go, you have your fire casting barbarian. Uh, so it might, it might seem cumbersome for some to, to buy a lot of skills um, but there is a great versatility uh, in doing this for example in any situation where fire is present I could uh, extinguish a fire I could shape it in the shape of a dragon uh, to accompany some, some bardic songs or whatever I could intensify uh, a, a dying a dying fire all of these uh, you, you could you could not do unless um, a system would allow for that uh, I'm thinking about the typical d and d spell where you have fireball well you can it's like you're you're memorizing that spell that all energy and symbols in your, in your head and you, you, you pull the trigger 
and you let go of that fireball. So, but in in the most vanilla way of running D and D, you cannot use that fireball for anything else. So in GURPS, you have all these little skills. You don't have to memorize them. You just know how to do your stuff. And when you do want to cast a spell, you just you just do it. Uh, it might cost you some fatigue point. Uh, in some extreme cases, uh, even hit points, it can cost you your, your health or uh, mental health to, to cast spells. So, um, so yeah, you have to dedicate a whole page in your character sheet to spells because you, you will end up with a lot of them. But there is great creativity and, and versatility waiting for you there. So, uh, uh, continuing the review, uh, the book then uh, takes you still in the principles of magic uh, towards the uh, mana levels uh, idea, where m magic as a force-like uh, ability or energy, ambient energy, is surrounding you. Uh, in some cases, in some holy places or magical places, the, the ambient magic can be stronger or lower. So uh, the mana level can help you or hinder you uh, when you cast spell, if you include that idea in your campaign. Uh, then you have the uh, ever popular uh, critical spell failure table. Uh, I pretty much enjoy the vanilla one in the book. Uh, I have written some uh, critical f uh, spell failure table for my Anoran game. Uh, I have this uh, school of magic, um, wild magic. So it, it I wanted to um, these uh, these spells to uh, be more explosive when when you miss uh, casting them. So any uh, wild mage, uh, if you just normally missed uh, miss a, a roll, I will ask the player to roll on that uh, <laughs> wild uh, critical spell failure table. Uh, then you have some, uh, some uh, description about the rituals. Rituals are little things your character are doing to cast a spell and in this uh, magic system you don't it's a generic system, so you don't need uh, special ingredients to cast spells, special gesture, or word, or uh, a magic wand, or stuff. All that stuff is, is part of the fluff or your, of your setting. But there is some conceit uh, from the get-go, um, like uh, based on your uh, skill level. So uh, they propose the idea that depending on how high your skill is in a spell, you will be uh, it will get easier to cast a spell. For example, a skill level of nine, a very low skill, uh, you would need a full ritual like chanting, dancing, moving around, uh, shouting, and and pray your spell will work uh, half the time. Uh, on a level 10 to 14, you will need a few words and, and or gesture. Um, on level 15 to 19, uh, you can move while casting. Um, so pretty, that's pretty interesting for adventurer. Uh, if your magician don't have that 15, maybe you need to stop and, and ask for his group to protect him while he's casting. But if he's uh, an advanced user of a spell, maybe he can just do it while running, for example. Uh, for the uh, upper levels of skill, uh, for example, level 20 to 24, you just need to concentrate on the spell and poof, there, there it goes. Uh, no need for special feats or anything. You just need to invest points in one spell maybe you, you really like uh, or or one spell your character is constantly using in, in your game. Uh, on level 25,
25 to 29, uh, the, the time to cast your spell is cut in, in four. So one quarter of the time to cast spell and, and it continues like that. So the more points you invest in a, in a spell, the more efficient it is. So you could be tied up, uh, head down, and still be able to do magic with just a thought. <laughs> and just boom, your spell goes. Um, to end the first chapter, which is the most important in this book, you need to understand how magic works. Um, apart from the fact that there are colleges or, or schools of magic, you have uh, what, what they called uh, spell classes. They are just types of spells uh, to uh, pretty much give you the tools to have different kinds of uh, effect where magic is used in certain ways. You have your regular spell, but then you have your area of effect spells. And those covers areas, and those cost more in fatigue the, the, the wider your area of effect is. So they work pretty much the same. You, you, roll, you roll 3d6 under your skill to succeed, but it's in the way of spending your fatigue points and how it will affect the area or in the case of a regular spell how the spell will work um, so you should familiarize yourself with at least the regular class of spell like just how to cast a basic spell the rest you can pretty much uh, check in the book when you need it but uh, yeah Understanding the regular spell, uh, regular spell casting uh, is uh, is essential, and then I have a, a general idea of, of uh, how to cast a, a basic information spell or missile. For example, the missile, a uh, classic spell in any game. Um, I could take a second here to uh, to explain. Uh, in GURPS, when you want to throw a, a fireball, a flame jet, or uh, a gush of hair or a flaming skull, whatever. Uh, first, you need to cast a spell. So, generally, it takes the form of your character taking uh, a concentrate maneuver. So, he's doing nothing but concentrating on his spell, creating the effect. It can have visuals, it can have special description, fluff, whatever, whatever you like. And after one second, generally the, char the character will have created this ball of flame in his hand. But since rounds in, in GURPS are one second long, um, you don't throw that right away. Some spell, you can inject more ener energy into, your, the, into the fireball or the projectile. So you can take many rounds to build a giant fireball in your hand, and those are really cool too to throw. They do like grenade-like damage and can wreck a whole party and just for a few uh, investment and fatigue. So uh, the first round you create your your let's say fireball. Then the round the, the round after that, if you decide to just throw this ball, you will use another another skill to throw it because you physically will throw the ball. It's not like the ball will levitate and pew, go by itself. You need to throw that ball yourself. And it can get interesting if you are not very good at throwing. So throwing a fireball in GURPS, you really throw with your arms and you, you, you throw that ball. So uh, that can be magical. The range of the fireball will not be your muscular power uh, throw. Uh, it will really be the magical energy you, uh, you put into it. But it's, it's a physical skill. It's like uh, throwing a rock. So you need to uh, invest in, uh, in uh, innate attack skill with broad range of attack, like balls, like... Um, jets uh, and, and these skills you can use with many spells so 
it's not like a, a point sink you have to uh, learn throw skill for each spell it's it's not like that so uh, so the spell you cast uh, in the first round and in the second round you can throw it and uh, or you can hold it uh, enlarging it or just keep it in your your hand and looking cool I mean you can you can you could cast a fireball in your hand go into a social situation and use that fireball as an intimidation tool and then just poof just uh, neutralize the spell without damage and, but that that in itself is very very cool uh, okay, so uh, chapter two is uh, dedicated to magical items. So most magical items will not require a skill to cast. So this is very cool. It's like free bonus. It's like in D and D. If you have a, a flaming sword, well, that sword will just burst into flame and on command and do what it does. Uh, chapter 3 to 26 are spells. You can call them colleges, schools, uh, traditions, whatever you like. Uh, they generally work around themes like uh, the, the basic elements, air, fire, earth, uh, body, mind, weather, uh, divination, uh, necromancy, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, all colleges are built on the logical principle I've mentioned, so you have to um, buy the first basic spell to then gain access to other uh, spell. Uh, for the advanced um, user, I would recommend that if you find a spell that you want your character to have, start with the most powerful spell first and then just follow the chain of prerequisite so let's say i want to uh, buy the fireball it will list the prerequisite as maybe a um, shape fire spell so i'm gonna buy that and in that spell i will have another prerequisite so you do that until you have all the prerequisite of your spell and pretty much your character this part of your character will be done. Um, you can invest, uh, let's say, four points or, or more in spell that you, you want your character to be good at. Otherwise, just spend one point just to be uh, efficient in, in that spell. Um, so yeah, like I said, you don't need to memorize the spell. You just roll against your, your, your skill. Um, the last chapters are uh, chapter 27 variation uh, they give you some uh, ideas to create variant of the magic system like how to create a, cl a clerical magic system uh, how to use uh, instead of majory the advantage called uh, power investiture so that you're using your priesthood and uh, uh, membership in a, in a organized religion as instead of majory or uh, aptitude in magic uh, instead of mana levels you will have uh, sanctity levels so uh, you will have uh, demonic places and holy places that would affect your your magic um, you can rename spells at your leisure if uh, this flight spell doesn't sound cool you could name it uh, flight of the eagle or something like that uh, there are some notes about improvisational ma magic and wildcard magic you could uh, very well in these optional version of the magic system you could buy for example fire magic skill at a very very high cost but you could do all fire spells with just that skill um, they talk also about um, spelt default in some setting, in some very magical setting like uh, uh, 
like uh, Eberron, Eberron, for example, where everything is magic, uh, you could have you could have spell defaults, uh, meaning uh, if you want to create a spark of magic, but you don't know the uh, you don't know the, the ignite fire spell, you could have maybe a IQ minus six default to create that spark of flame even though you, you didn't know how to do it. Uh, that of course depends on your uh, setting and campaign uh, rules and GMs also. Uh, and the last uh, thing about uh, GURPS Magic is the alchemy chapter. So yeah, talking about uh, magical potions and and uh, how to do ointments, oils, and secret uh, potion and such. Uh, and if the GURPS Magic book, if it isn't enough for you, there is another book about the same uh, width called Tom Tomatology. And this is a book just of optional magic system. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, uh, that thick <laughs> of material on magic just in the fourth edition. So um, basically you have a lot to work with if you want to add magic in any of your GURPS game. Or you could use some of uh, some of what is suggested here in other games. These are generic rules, pretty easy to read, and you could uh, get inspired by it. So uh, I will hand this very long video with uh, tips to design a wizard or magician. Uh, step one would be concept. Uh, so try to have a concept in mind. Uh, maybe it could help to uh, choose what is the most significant spell for your character and you need to uh, make sure you have at least major uh, zero for your character I think it's five points but you, you would be better buying at least major one just to have a, a bonus on your spells because major is a kind of a, like a talent and each level you take in a majority give you a bonus on your skills, so uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not a small advantage to take. Um, um, yeah, make sure you buy your most powerful spells in advance according to your team or concept. Uh, buy all prerequisites. Uh, use a grimoire sheet to list all your spells and for the uh, maybe advanced user you could buy extra fatigue points or an advantage called energy reserve I'm not sure it is in the GURPS basic set maybe it is in the GURPS powers but anyway it's super easy to find on the internet uh, energy reserve is like extra fatigue point you can buy in the GURPS basic set but with a limitation on uh, only available for magic so that can help you cast more spell more often and especially if you want to create that uh, cinematic mage you would need uh, to buy a lot of uh, extra fatigue point just for spell casting and if your world supports it, you could buy a power stone. Uh, power stone is the physical equivalent of uh, uh, energy reserve or extra fatigue point in the form of an object. Or a norcrux or a cane or a power stone, a power crystal, whatever. So uh, thanks for watching. This was long, but here's magic. Uh, remain uh, a very good uh, system to uh, create a versatile situation. I've used it 
so often in Vampire the Masquerade game, in in typical fantasy game, creating very good uh, wizard duels. Um, it's great, it's just great, and it will work uh, to your taste. And uh, it's very easy to, to tweak, to uh, throw it in another direction for your campaign. So thanks for watching, see you next time.